Welcome. In this video, I want to see how we can do integration using uh, partial fractions. So if you are taught to integrate a function and you have to use partial fractions, the first thing that you have to keep in mind is you have to decompose whatsoever you are given into its uh, partial fractions. So we have to decompose this into partial fractions. But before you even decompose, you have to observe something. Here, the power in x is uh, the highest order of uh, x here is 2. Here, the highest order of x is 1. We have x to the power 0, x to the power 0, x to the power, x to the power 2. So if the power there, uh, if the power in the denominator is more than the power in the numerator, then you can proceed uh, to do your partial fractions. Okay, even if the power is more than uh, in the numerator and in the denominator, you have to use a different form of uh, decomposition into partial fractions. So we have to decompose this. So there are basically four ways in which uh, you can decompose something into partial fractions. One, you have to observe what you're going to have in the denominator here. So if what you have in the denominator here is a statement like this one, you would need to factorize it. So after you factorize, you may end up with what we call linear uh, factors. So linear factors will look like this one. We will have something there, and then here we may have maybe one uh, x plus one, and x maybe plus three. These are linear factors. These, if you try to decompose, if the denominator looks like this one, you try to decompose into partial fractions, these will span out like this one. You're going to have a, uh, then this one, x plus one, plus b, and x uh, plus three. So if your denominator, after you factorize, looks like this one, your partial fractions, or the fractions that were, were added in order to come to this will look like this. Then we can, we can also have another form of uh, factors here, if we have what you call quadratic. So we can have quadratic factors there. So factors that are quadratic will appear like this. We may have maybe x plus 1 in the denominator, and there somewhere we have x squared plus 2. If this is what you have, then the partial fractions that we are added will appear like this one. A, uh, x plus 1, then here we are going to have plus, then here because we have the square, we are going to have b, x plus c. If we add to the power 3, we are going to have to the power 2, to the power 1, then plus d. Then you maintain this one here, you maintain the quadratic factor there. This is when, after you factorize what is in the denominator here, you end up with quadratic factors. And quadratic factors will look like we are going to have x to the power 2, we are going to have x to the power 3, and so on. Okay, apart from this, we can have uh, where the factors are repeated. Okay, repeated. Uh, factors. So if what we have are repeated factors, we are going to have something that looks like this. Maybe we have also x plus 3, then to the power 3, then on top there, there will be some number like what we have there. So these, if you try to decompose them into partial fractions, you are going to have a over x uh, plus 1 plus b. Remember, these are multiplying three of them because you have to the power 3. So we are going to have b x plus 3 plus c x plus uh, 3 to the power 2. Here the power is 1 plus d, then x plus 3 to the power 3. Okay? So if what you have are repeated uh, factors like this, the repeated factors will span out like this when you decompose into partial fractions. The other components that you need to keep in mind is if the, the power in the numerator, if the power in the numerator, numerator there, the power in the numerator is equal or more than the power in the denominator, then there you would need to use the long division. You're going to divide, maybe you end up with one plus, then you put your remainder here then you are going to have uh, something here that you can factorize. Then this, because you'll be able to factorize 
you apply partial fractions again here, and they may fall into any of the three uh, categories here. So now, we need to observe what is happening on the denominator there so that we can pick if they, the partial fractions will look like this, or if they will look like this, or if they will look like this. But we can clearly see that uh, we are not going to use uh, a long division so that we end up with something like one or we may end up with a function. Then the remainder you put it there uh, and uh, you factorize the, the denominator that is there. So here we are not going to use this one because the power in the denominator is more than the power in the numerator. So the next thing that we need to do is to factorize what is down here so that we see the kind of partial fraction decomposition that we may end up with if we are given something like that. So let's see, we factorize this one. We have 3x squared plus x minus 4. So we can factorize uh, this one. The product of the factors will be a multiplied by c, which will be negative 2. Then sum is equal to the coefficient of b. I mean the coefficient of x, which is b. Okay, so here we can clearly see that uh, it's 1. Then we look to, we have to look for two numbers. Uh, which, when we multiply, uh, we get this. When we add, we get this. Normally, you look at uh, the, the, the factors of this number here, but you have to try them both positive or negative. Clearly, you can see that uh, here, we're going to have um, 4 and negative 3. So the next thing that you do here, you attach x, attach x, and replace them here. Okay, you, you, you are not going to change anything there. So we're going to have 3x squared minus 3x uh, plus 4x minus 4. Then you can factorize now by grouping. Here you can factor, group these two. You can group these two as well. So what are we going to do here? We can, uh, we can factor out the 3x there. Uh, 3x. Here we'll remain with x minus 1. Here we can factor out a 4. There's a plus there, we will remain with x minus 1. We can see that this is common, we can factor it out, x minus 1, then uh, 3x uh, plus 4. Once we do this, this statement here in the integral will appear like this now. We have 5x plus 2 over x minus 1. The reason why we are factorizing here is to make sure we know how our partial fractions will appear like. And clearly we can see that we have linear factors, so the partial fractions will spin out uh, like this one. Okay, so here we can now change this uh, to partial fractions. We can now convert that into partial fractions because we know that uh, we have linear factors, so the partial fractions will appear like this. So we are going to have uh, 5x, plus 2 over x minus 1, 3x plus 4. Okay, these guys are going to spin out like this. So we are going to have a over x minus 1 plus b over 3x plus 4. Now here again, we need to remove the fractions. So how do we do that? We have to multiply with uh, the denominator, this one here. We multiply it throughout. We are going to multiply it throughout here. So we multiply with x minus 1, then 3x plus 4. We are going to multiply it there. Okay, we we'll multiply it there. We are going to multiply it there. Okay, so we are going to multiply that one. Let's see what we can get. So when we multiply this with this, this guy will disappear here because it will simplify with that. So we're going to have 5x plus 2 is equal to, when we multiply this one with this, we're going to have a uh, 3x uh, plus 4. Okay. Then here, when we multiply this with that, we're going to have plus b. And here we're going to have x minus 1. 
So now what you need to do is you need to find the value for A, the value for B. So you can let X be anything and come up with an equation. Again, let X be a different parameter and have two equations and you solve them simultaneously. Uh, the other approach is you try to make whatever is, is here, you make it zero so that the other one will remain. So if I try to let X equal to one, here, here, I'll end up uh, having um, a zero. So when x is equal to one, this is going to be seven is equal to, I put one there, I'll get seven a. Then here, I'll get a zero, which is what I wanted. From there, we can divide, and a will be equal to one. So we know the value for a, it is equal to one. We know the value for a. The next thing that we need to do is to find b. So how do we find b? We can say let x be 0 so that uh, we can come up with an equation. You assume numbers that are reasonably small so that it will be easy for you to solve. Okay, so if x is equal to 0, we are going to have 2 is equal to uh, a multiplied by 4 plus uh, negative b. Because here we are going to have negative 1, so we are going to have negative uh, B. Okay, let me put it there so that uh, so B minus one. We have let x to be zero here. X is equal to zero. We are going to have something like this. So we are going to have two is equal to four uh, a minus B. But we know the value for a, so we can we can put it there. So we're going to have two is equal to four one then minus B. So we can take this other side, we're going to have 2 minus 4 is equal to minus b. From there, we can see that b will be equal to 2. Okay, so our partial fractions were of a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2. So we need now to, to replace that in the integral and try to integrate. We need to replace that in the integral. Uh, and try to integrate. So no, normally when you're given to integrate using uh, uh, partial fractions, what, whatsoever you're given, you need to change it into partial fractions. You need to change it into partial fractions and from there you can integrate. So our statement looks like this one. Our statement now looks like this one, integral of uh, A what is our a1 over x minus 1 plus what is the value for b2 over 3x uh, plus 4? This guy is here. I put them in brackets. We are integrating with respect to x. Now, what we have here, it's a polynomial. So we can integrate each monomial. Then at the end of the day, we simplify them accordingly. If we are adding, we add them. If we are subtracting, we subtract them, okay? So I can integrate this one plus the integral of this one plus until I exhaust all the monomials that I have there. So this will be equal to integral of one over x minus one with respect to x plus integral, these two will be there, three x uh, plus four. We are integrating this with respect to x. Now. Uh, here, we know that the integration of this one will be, if you have something like this, this will be in the modulus of. The reason why I'm putting modulus here, you know that uh, the log of a negative does, does not e e exist. So this thing here can only be zero or positive. That's why we, we can see the bars there. So that this statement is valid. Otherwise, without the bars, it will include the negatives here. So you put the bars. Then if there, there was a number that is not one, we could have divided it there. I hope we are clear there. Then we proceed here. I will integrate this one, but let me factor out a two. Then here we are going to have three x plus four dx. I will proceed to integrate this one, but if you have a number there, you can pull it out of the integral symbol and you end up having that. So this would be equal to in x minus 1 uh, plus 2, then in modulus of this, 
3x uh, plus 4. Remember, logarithm of a negative does not exist, but you see what is there. If there is a number which is not 1, you will divide it here. So you have to divide. And every time you integrate without limits, we are integrating without limits here. So you have to add the arbitrary constant. So now you can continue and simplify this further. You can take this one here, and since you are adding, you can multiply the two statements using uh, laws of logarithms. But even if you end here, you'll be given uh, four marks. So thank you for watching.